Hello again. Today we've got Ripley with us. So what we're going to do is we're going to make Ripley giant. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed, liked, commented. I've almost hit 5,000 subscribers, so thank you very much. And today, similar to my last few videos, I'm winding back the clock and going back into some of the early techniques in Photoshop and having some fun. Okay, Photoshop's all about fun. Today we're going to have fun. We're going to create a large dog. So I'm going to split it up into two parts. The first part is going to be the old school way that I used to do it. And then we have new tools in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you one of the new tools in Photoshop. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up and hopefully you enjoy this video. Okay, so first thing we need to do is get a photo of each of us separately. Because what I'm going to do is have, got to try and keep all our lighting the same. So I'm going to shoot in manual mode. I'm going to shoot at a shallow depth of field. So we're going to shoot at f2.8, create that nice shallow depth of field. It's all about lighting. So what we need to do is get a photo of Ripley and a photo of myself as close to each other as possible so our light doesn't change too much. All right, so what we'll do first, let's get a photo of Ripley first so we can get that over and done with. Um, and then I can get a photo of myself and we can sort of add them together. So let's get Ripley out here. <laughs> All right, can you just stand here with her, Jade? Okay, well, I need to try and get her to sit if we can get her to sit. Okay, good girl. Sit, sit, sit. <laughs> Don't lie. Actually, that might work okay. That might work okay. So if I get in. Okay, so now I've got my photos of Ripley. We've got a few different ones. Now what I need to do is get in the same water, same light, everything very similar, and then we'll blend them together in Photoshop. So let me just go and get some photos. 10 second timer and the same settings that I just had. Now onto the editing side of things, and this is where we're going to have a bit of fun. Now to make this look as realistic as we possibly can, ideally we do want to shoot in manual mode and we want to try and keep everything very similar. So here's the two images that I've chosen. So what I've done, I've just brought them in with the same white balance, basically the same camera settings, and we're trying to make them look as similar as possible just to make the blend look a bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is start with Ripley and I'm just going to come up to select, select subject. Okay, so now that we've selected our subject, what we want to do is select and mask. If you can't see your select and mask, okay, it might be that you're on a tool that doesn't have that option. So I find the lasso tool is the best one. Um, a lot of the tools up towards the top will have that select and mask. So if you don't see that select and mask, just change your tool, select and mask. Now, these are the default settings that I like to use. So normally I'll have this on overlay so I can see where the cut is going to happen. So everything in red is what we're affecting. Settings over here, just pause the video at any time. Um, I have my radius at one pixel, my smoothing at five, feathering at one pixel, and the rest are pretty much as they are. The most important part is down here with our output. We want to make sure that our output is a new layer with a layer mask. Okay, so feel free to pause the video at any time. Um, you'll see what I've got selected here. But most importantly, new layer with layer mask, and then press OK. And that's going to select just our subject. So now what we want to do is we want to move our subject onto our other image. So if we come up here and grab the move tool, so top right hand corner, move tool, we're just going to click and drag. And then we're going to grab this layer here that has the mask because we've created a new layer with a mask. We're going to select that, click and drag, and that will bring over our layer with the mask. So we can close this one down now. We don't need that anymore. So now here we have Ripley masked out and we can just with our move tool we can move her around wherever we want okay so i'm going to put her around about there 
Okay, so now we have Ripley on our photo. And if we just press Control or Command and T, we can move her around, make her bigger or as small as we like. Okay, in this case, let's just make her a little bit bigger, make her really look good. Now, to make the blend look nice, just what I'm doing is lining up her feet so they are in the water. Okay, now what I want to do is I want a white brush. So if we just press this little arrow here or X on the keyboard, we'll alternate between black and white. What we want to do is we want to start to paint in some of this mask. Okay, so remember black blacks out. We've blacked out all the water and all the background and just selected our subject. So we've blacked out everything around Ripley. So a white brush is going to undo what we've blacked out. Now with our opacity down nice and low, so somewhere down around about 10%, with a white brush on the layer mask. So make sure you are on that layer mask. And if we just start painting, that's going to start to reveal both her shadow and some of the water from the original image. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly start to paint until we start to blend some of the water from her original photo in with this one. Okay, and I'm even just going to bring it over nice and smoothly so we start to blend some of that water in with our other image. Okay, so now starting to look a bit nicer. Okay, so somewhere I'm even just going to slowly feather in. I don't want to go up into the, the sand too much because this image didn't have sand. Okay, so just the water parts and we're just going to blend it in even just around my feet just to make it look a little bit more natural. So somewhere around about there is looking pretty good. Okay, and on to the next example. So there's a new feature in Photoshop, makes this so much easier than trying to get everything aligned. So similar to what we had before, we've got a picture of Ripley, but what I'm going to do is put her onto this background. So completely different white balance, everything's different, but I'm going to show you this new feature in Photoshop. So similar to what we did before, we're going to select her, but what I'm going to do first is with my Move tool, I'm going to click and drag, and then I'm just going to place her on top before we do the selection. So just with my move tool, click, drag, hold the shift key, and that'll place her directly in the middle. And I'll just quickly resize because my old photo was taken on a 20 megapixel. This one's now 24. So control or command and T for transform will let us resize. Okay, so Again, similar to what we did with the first image, we're going to come up to Select, Subject, okay? And again, we're just going to grab our lasso tool so we can see our Select and Mask, okay? And now what we're going to do is if we come up to our View Mode and we're going to change our view to On Layers, so then we're going to see it on the actual layer, okay? So from there, that's where we can use our Refine Edge tool if we need to. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So that's another good way of doing this. Just yeah, move your layer first, select your subject, do it on layers, and then you'll get to see. Now, as you can see, white balance, everything is completely different. It's all, it, it doesn't match. All I'm going to do for now is hit OK. And now we've got our subject on our background layer. So now we can delete this layer here because that was our reference. Now we've got our layer with a layer mask. If we click on this top layer, I'm going to just press Control or Command and T for transform. And we can basically move Ripley around to wherever we want. Okay, so I'm going to keep her around about that same size, but I'm just going to move her over just over this way a little bit. Have her nice and big in the frame, somewhere around about there. Now what we're going to do, this is this new feature in Photoshop that I was talking about, and this it is really good. OK, now, if you don't see it on your screen, what we're going to do is come up to Window. And down to Contextual Taskbar. So Contextual Taskbar, you'll see these options appear. And all I'm going to do is hit Harmonize. Click Harmonize. It's going to take a while. It does use AI. It's, a, it's an AI thing. But it will save you a lot of time if you just want to do this quickly. And you watch what this does. Okay, and as with all the, the AI tools, they give us a few different options. But as you can see, it's changed our white balance. It's even put in a shadow. So it's created a shadow for Ripley. And it gives us a few different options. 
Now you also need to note you do need an internet connection for, for the AI tools and you do need a pretty beefy PC or laptop or, or system to run a lot of the AI tools. Okay, but as you can see, it gives you lots of different options and it changes our white balance and makes it look good. So I'm gonna go with the second one. I think the second one looks okay. Then we can just hit this little close tool. Okay, so there's our image without anything and there's our new. And as you can see, it's putting in a shadow. It's, it's doing everything for us. Okay, it's literally one click. Okay, and because we have a layer mask, we can still do things with it. So if I want to, let's just say we don't like how dark Ripley's face is, if I grab my brush tool, and what I'm going to do is grab a black brush, and we're going to black out the bits we don't like. So a nice soft brush, uh, opacity nice and small. And then if I just kind of black out her face a little bit, what it's going to do is reveal that original image underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to brighten her face up just a little bit, maybe come down into the water just a little bit just with a nice soft brush. And then we're just brushing a little bit out. But yeah, that's it. That's that's the new tool. That's how we can have some fun in Photoshop. And that's that's what Photoshop is all about. It's all about having some fun and doing some things that we wouldn't normally be able to do. Okay, occasionally you will see lines like this in your image. Uh, all I'm going to do is grab a black brush, go back up to 100%, um, and we'll just black that out. With that layer mask selected, we'll just black that little line out and that should disappear. And same with this one. If we just go to that, use our black brush and just black out the bits that we don't want. Okay, so when working with layers, yeah, sometimes you'll see the borders of the previous layer. So just click on a layer mask and black, blacks out. So you can black out all the bits that you don't want. And then finally, layer, flatten image. And there we have our image. Okay, if you want, to, if you want this bar gone, which I don't like to have that bar there, if we just click these three little dots, and hide bar. Okay, so then we've got a nice clean interface to work with. Okay, so that's it for this one. Hopefully you did like it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe back out live soon. We'll do some more live non-Photoshop videos. Um, I'll show you how we actually capture images in camera without Photoshop. So hit subscribe if you want to see that sort of thing. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Hello again. Today, working with dogs, don't do it. Okay, when they say don't work with animals and children, there's a reason behind it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make her giant. So I'm going to combine a photo of Ripley and a photo of myself. And we... So now the challenging part, we need to try and get some photos. And I'll run through what I'm doing when I start to take the photos. You ready? You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.